All right. So this is the one I made yesterday. And I'm going to piece it together with that section behind. Let's see what happens. First of all, I've got to get sand it on the wheel and uh, do what I can, just tap centering it. It always needs a little extra care. And the rim often goes out of round. So I'm just marking it where it's coming towards me. And after I've made the mark, I can push it away from that mark to hopefully get it in the center. That's not too bad. Uh, top, I'll just uh, straighten it. You always want to tap center the, center the base. If you try and tap, you know, center the rim and the base off, the pot ends up with a very peculiar profile. So that actually went remarkably well. Sometimes if you've got a draft in your workshop, you'll end up with a, an oval pot or a Got a little bit of an oval here going. The bats are slightly flexible. When you pick them up, they go out around. So I can just fudge them a little bit. That's pretty good. And then another thing that happens is sometimes the uh, top piece has shrunk a little bit more than the bottom piece or you didn't quite measure it accurately. So I'll take that top measure again and just make sure it's going to fit, which it will. So now I'm just going to dry this rim a little bit more. It's just a, it might collapse under the weight of the segment I'm going to add. take the extra weight. All right, so I'm going to slurry the groove on the top here. And, uh, and then flip the other one on top of this, which is always dramatic. <laughs> and, you can use this technique to make smaller pots. They don't always have to be 18 pounds and 14 pounds. I even use a similar technique when I'm making long neck vases, which are very hard to make in one piece. So I just usually make an ovoid belly and then attach a soft collar the next day and attach it. So anyway, that's that. There we go. Just about good enough. And then I'll wire up, I'll cut off the uh, top bat. It's pretty nicely adhered to the, uh, the bat. I always leave a sort of a thickness down at the bottom here and splay it out so it's less likely to collapse when you or fall off the bat when you flip it.
and uh, if you get all the parts right, it goes pretty well. Got some raggedy edges in here, so I'm just going to cut those up. Now, what have we got? If you get a little bump in it to start with, it's very hard to get it out. But I'll do what I can. I've also found that you've got to be really gentle at this point. I'll have another chance to kind of fix the seam if I need to tomorrow when I put the rim on. But for now, I'm just very carefully pulling out the shape. That's not too bad. just don't want to push too much right at the seam. It tends to be where the part is thinnest. So you just kind of leave that alone as much as you can. But it's coming. And I never cut the rim until right at the very end. I sometimes find if I cut the rim early, it kind of the shape loses its, integ its integrity. You got it. It's also very interesting when you're making smaller pots, you know, the whole, the arc of the curve is relatively short. And you get used to the, uh, you know, the length of the line of a belly on a pitcher, for instance. But, uh, you know, these guys are much bigger, much longer curve, or, you know, to make graceful curve from top to bottom. It's slightly different mindset and trick. much slower curve, basically. And it's nearly done, so I'm actually going to cut off that extra piece here with a needle tool. going to bevel this so it's uh, coming to a point and I'll split the uh, the rim ring when I make it so it can fit nicely on that. This part, this pole is going to be it. It's coming together pretty well. I might just work this a little bit. Like I say, I can go back tomorrow, and do a little poking and prodding and teasing out and cleaning up the inner joint of the uh, 
seen. That's about that's about all right. It's got a little bump on top, but don't matter. There you go. <laughs> I think it went pretty well. See you tomorrow. Hey, hey. Uh, so I've gone to my electric wheel, the other end of the workshop, and made a pad of clay. I'm going to put this sturdy masonite bat down on it, and I measured the. Uh, diameter of the rim of the umbrella pot. And I've got myself a lump of clay here. It's actually five pounds. I'm going to center this up and make a little stubby collar that will become the rim. So now I'm going to open it up all the way down to the back and then widen it. Nice and carefully. And uh, let's see, I've got a little ways to go, but what I like to do is kind of widen this out. Yeah, still got a little ways to go. Take this all the way out. I like to have it tapered slightly. And we can put the uh, a little groove in it so it attaches nicely to the rim. And what's below? <laughs> we got a ghost at the other end of the workshop. It's the door closing. All right, so I've got that cleaned up, I'm ready to go down the other end. Put some slurry on the rim of the umbrella pot here and then attach the final piece of the puzzle. There we go. So now I've got my, uh, my little stubby collar that goes down there. And I always wire this off with a wire. Uh, you've got to be careful. You, you get it right up underneath the bat. Sometimes you slice off more of the rim than you want. You're not careful. So that's that. Now I'm going to attach this down at the rim. I'll end up cutting the the uh, top of this a little while later. You just got to be careful with this joint. Not squeeze too hard to begin with. That's what I found. Um, yeah, this is working out pretty good so far. And uh, what else can I tell you about this? I am going to just wire off the very top of it in a minute. I think I'll do that now. That wasn't terribly elegant. So now you just got to finish the rim off with a pretty shaped, it's pretty shaped to top it all off. Uh, 
I usually make a rim that's slightly beveled down because the, uh, the drying process kind of pulls it, pulls it in. And you don't want the rim too big. I mean, you don't want it too little. Everything's Goldilocks around here. You just got to get it just right. Um, so I'm going to work that seam a little bit now. And I really like putting in a little ornament, a little pie crust ridge underneath the rim. It just gives the pot a little frill, a little daintiness. You know, it's a pretty big substantial pot and it's just nice to give it a little decoration, a little ornament. Takes a little while just to get it sorted. Get the shapes all working together. That's pretty good. I'll tell you what. It's taking me less time than usual to do this thing, so you should uh, film me more often, Doc. <laughs> That's pretty good. Sometimes you can just worry it to death and you, you've got something, you've got to know when to quit. That's not why I'm going to quit. I'll button up completely because i got to put that little crimped band underneath the rim. Unless you just use a, your finger and uh, squish it. You see this ornament on all sorts of pots. I mean, Kaya to you with whom I work used to do it. My mentor Sven Bayer does it. But you see it on pots in folk cultures around the world, whether it's Spain and Italy, Mediterranean, North Africa, West Africa, all over. I always think it's like that little rhyme stuck in his thumb and he pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I? <laughs> That'll do. 